YouTube, what's good? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over the What's the Move music video and this paper rip collage effect that Lone Wolf and Og do throughout the music video. Ever since this video came out, I really wanted to replicate this effect, but uh, I just haven't really had the like assets to do so. And now that I've finally spent so much time making the paper rip and fold, the paper textures and the tape pack, I finally have enough of that stuff to be able to create a digital version of it that looks pretty damn similar. Uh, I tested out a little bit of it and, uh, and the look is pretty close, guys. Obviously, this is gonna be a digital version of their analog effect. So keep that in mind. It's not going to be 100% accurate, but I think it's a really cool effect still and uh, obviously a little bit of a time saver. And if you don't have a scanner and, you know, ink and all the other stuff, printer, uh, then you can get this effect done. So if you want to go ahead and follow along, I'm going to have a link to my pack in the description. I'm going to be using basically the ultimate pack. I'm going to be using probably assets from each one. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and grab that. Also, this video is going to take me a very long time to record and edit. So if you guys want to go ahead and leave me a like and a comment, and if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and do so. That would mean a lot. If this is the first video you're seeing from me, uh, what we're doing here is a thing called Tutorialness. It's where I'm uploading 31 tutorials in 31 days of December. Definitely enough reason to subscribe. There's a bunch of videos similar to this on my channel. So go ahead, subscribe, and uh, I'm going to include the link to the playlist down below. So if you want to uh, watch the other 19 tutorials, before this, go ahead and do that. But yeah, guys, that's enough talking. Let's get into the video. I'm going to turn off my camera because it's probably going to take me a while anyways, and my camera turns off after 30 minutes. So let's get into it. All right, now that we're in Premiere, we're not going to be here for long. We're just going to be showing you the effect that I'm going for, and then we're going to take a screenshot and go and do the most of the stuff in Photoshop. So the effect that I'm going for here is this paper rip collage that they do. It's like a little transition. I think it's really cool. Uh, basically, what they did is just took a screenshot or a screen grab from the music video, maybe like one or two frames or whatever, and then just cut it up a bunch of ways. I went ahead and took a screenshot from a different music video only because there was so many effects on the What's the Move music video that uh, it was just kind of hard to find a good frame. So what I did is I just went ahead and screenshotted a clip from Over Your Head music video by Lil Uzi in future. So just take a screenshot, make sure you can uh, find where you save that and let's hop into Photoshop. All right, so now that we're in Photoshop, I'm gonna bring up my paper textures pack and I found a paper texture that I already like and I'm just gonna rescale this to fit how I'd like. I think I'm gonna have the, if I can figure it out, the rip kind of go this way. Just holding shift to like restretch it or whatever. It doesn't need to be in proportion because it's just a texture in the end anyways. So I think something like that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to use a blending mode. Uh, I think lighten, screen, color dodge, all these ones look pretty good. I think I'm going to use screen and then go to adjustment layers and just add a little bit of curves to the image. So it uh, maybe looks a little bit more like it's printed on there. And then going to the freeze frame or the screenshot that we used and adding some noise to that. I think I'm going to use some monochromatic so there's no color. And then you can just play between the uniform and Gaussian. I like the way uh, uniforms look in here. And I'll bump that up a lot. And then I haven't really found a really good way to make this a completely like non-destructive edit, or at least I haven't thought of one. So what I'm going to do is merge these layers. And now you can't go ahead and change any of the stuff before. So if you wanted to maybe control J and duplicate that and make it like a folder or whatever, so you can go back and change it later. But I think I'm pretty happy with how this looks and uh, not too worried about it being messed up. The first thing I'm going to do is just take this polygon tool and find a spot that I like, just kind of cut it diagonal. And then I'm going to control J that layer and then scale this layer up. And it's all just going to take a little bit of tweaking. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And I think it looks kind of cool lining up his hat. So it like kind of looks like the hat's supposed to be there, but then it's obviously messed up here. Maybe making it a little bit smaller. Nothing too crazy. I think that looks pretty cool. And then we can go ahead and go to blending options, add some drop shadow. I think adding a hundred and then making the size like pretty small. So it kind of just looks like it's barely on top of there and then keeping the spread pretty much down to nothing the distance as well. If you want, you can add a little bit of noise. I think it just fits a little bit better since we already added noise. So I added something like six. And then I'm going to go to the tape pack that I have here and go to the clear tape. And it's like a, it's like a scotch tape or whatever. I'm going to scale it down, toss it on there, something like that. And then I think I'm going to just grab one more, a smaller piece or something. And then I try to line up the width of the tape when you like scale it down. So it looks like it's from like the same roll or whatever. So just kind of eyeball it doesn't have to be exact but something like that looks good i'm gonna toss it right there so it kind of looks like they you know cut the, the image and taped over and then what i'm gonna do is save this so i'm just gonna make a folder called stills done or something just so i have the frames come in one by one or whatever and then i'm just gonna name this one so that's gonna be the first frame of the effect and then i think i'm just gonna duplicate this layer one more time and drag it down a little bit more and then if you want the paper to look exactly straight you can go here and go to eraser tool and just kind of erase at 
the layer itself. I think this is a pretty quick way to make it look pretty cool. And since the drop shadow is already applied, it will uh, follow the edges. I'm using the Kyle's Natural Edge Eraser uh, out of the Mega Pack from Adobe. I'll have that linked in the description for uh, you guys. It's 100% free to all Adobe members, so that's pretty cool. We can add something like that. And then I'm going to grab another piece of tape. I think I'm going to use the clear tape again, uh, just choosing a different piece of tape so it looks different. And we can put it, make sure the width is kind of the same. I think I'm going to put it over maybe somewhere around here. And then maybe one more. Make sure I'm dragging that to the top. And then since it's over a lighter color, you can't really see it. So you can just control J it and duplicate it. So now there's two of them. I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. It looks fine for me. And then we're going to go ahead and save this as a PNG again. I'm actually going to name this three because I kind of want the first one to actually be the effect with nothing on it. So I want this to be the first frame. So I'm going to go ahead and file save as again, going to the stills. I'm going to make it a JPEG. It doesn't really matter what you're saving it as PNG JPEG. And I'm going to rename the first one we saved to two and then this one to one. And there we are. We're fine with that. And you can see there's a first three images there. And then actually, before we save that, I'm just going to go to the this top one right here and just delete that part. So it kind of has a, a little bit of a rip there, change up the position of it a bit. But I just think that looks kind of cool. Save it as number three. And then what I'm going to do is open up the third one, actually. Make sure you're unselected on the lock. And if you click up in this corner, these tools are going to come around where you can like enter numbers. And I'm just going to make the width negative. So that's going to do is make it flip. And then we can zoom in or something and just do a cool effect here. Just another still. Since we're only using one still, you can change it up as much as you want. And then we can file, save that as the fourth still. And the order doesn't really matter how it comes up or whatever. But I'm just naming them numbers so it's easy to follow. And then I'm going to go back to the first one and we can start getting uh like little texture things like his ring and maybe like his necklace or something and, or his watch for like those little things that popped up like his teeth before we could do uh the mouth as well but it doesn't really matter too much so the first thing i'm going to do is his rings here making a square doesn't really matter because it's going to be ripped in paper anyways and then just holding control j and then you can turn off that layer just to see what we're working with here uh, I, I like the way that looks and then i'm going to go to and i'm actually first off going to bring in one of the white paper rips we can do doesn't really matter too much, but I'm just trying to find one with some good rips that I like. And we ended up with paper rip 14. That way it's kind of uh, already ripped for us too, because it's like a good fit for this image. That makes sense. And then I'm just going to shift drag it here, do something like that, and then drag it on top of this layer. Actually drag it behind, my bad. And then what you're going to do is just fit it as best as you possibly can. And then I'm going to go ahead and just cut off the edges of this so you can kind of visualize what we're working with. I'm going to do that to both the image and the paper rips. And if it gives you that error or so it is not editable, you can go to rasterize layer. Just do something like that thing for this side. That's looking all right. I'm going to go to the image layer here and go to that Kyle brush I was talking about earlier and just erase at the edges of this image here. You can even do the sides over here. Just whatever you think looks good. I like the very light look. So again, just erasing the edges here. And then we can go to something like one of our black rips here. And then I'm just going to turn it over here and add to something like lighten. And then just create a clipping mask, actually. So that way it just affects the image so it looks like it's on paper. And then I'm not exactly super happy with how this rip looks on the edges. So I'm just going to go ahead and rip around here. If you want, you can have the edges straight on the side. I think I'm just going to have them straight on this side. It doesn't really matter. It's all personal preference. And then just touch up the image again just do whatever you guys think looks cool and then you can go ahead and merge this layer and then i'm going to duplicate this layer actually before i merge it so you can go to merge layer after you duplicate them and then i'm going to go ahead and just kind of put it just going to turn on the background layer and see what it looks like obviously that's uh right where his hand was so you don't have to have it there you do something like up here and then i'm going to go to blending options and turn on that drop shadow again and that looks really really harsh so we're not going to do something like that we're just going to tweak it to how we like I think something like that looks good. And then we can go ahead and add these in in Premiere anyway. So you can just go ahead and click export as. And if you do it this way, it's going to just do the size of the image, which is really cool. So it's easy to move around in Premiere and then just locate where you found the stills. And then inside of that, I'm just going to make a folder called like texture or something, just like shots that are like not the main background. And we're going to name this rings one. And then I'm going to turn back on all the layers that we just were working on and I'm going to erase it in a different way. So we have a totally different image so we can go to the rings here and maybe we want just like a, a lot smaller of one or just like kind of just the rings. You can go ahead and erase the paper, save a little bit of time and the Kyle eraser is a little messy. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and then click select inverse, delete. And then you can go ahead and make your own ripped edges on the side. 
do whatever you think looks good. And then I'm gonna go to short here and actually just change the blending mode to something different, just so it looks a little bit different. I'll just do saturation so it makes it black and white. And then you can go ahead and merge these layers again. Make sure you turn off that background layer. And then I'm just gonna copy the layer style from the uh, first one we did, and then just paste it under here so it has the same kind of shadow because that's how it would look in real life. It'd have like a, you know, relatively the same shadow or whatever. And then we're gonna go and export as again and find that same spot. You saved all of the other ones and we can name it rings too. And then we're gonna turn back on the background layer and we can find something else we wanna mask out. Maybe we can do this watch. So we just took out the watch again and then I'm gonna drag in something like Paper Rips 9. And then I'm gonna try to line it up as best as I can just for right now. I think actually we're gonna cut closer to the watch here because I'm gonna show you guys uh, like a cool little trick how you can make it look like it was like ripped all the way around here and then select inverse and make sure you're selected on the watch layer and just delete. And we can go ahead and drag whatever rip you want in here, something like this one. I'm just gonna try to find a spot that kind of follows the curvature of the object so it's a little bit less work for us. And then that looks pretty good. And the first thing I'm gonna do is rasterize this layer. And then if you want, you can go ahead and, and kind of just do something like this. Make sure you get the rest of it. And then as long as you're rasterized and go to the move tool, you should be able to bend the paper however you like. So I'm just gonna find a spot where I think it looks good here and then we can click enter and then just go to the eraser tool and erase the merge there and then just keep on doing that till it follows your object. So then again, going around, going to the move tool and finding it, finding something that like follows. If you want to turn on the black layer behind, it helps out a lot so you don't have any harsh edges or whatever. So you can actually see what you're doing. That looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect because if you do have a sh harsh edge or whatever, you can just go to the eraser tool and just tweak that a little bit. And the reason this is better than just erasing into the white, because it has like the actual paper rip, so it kind of looks a little bit better, in my opinion, at least. And then again, just the polygon tool and then the move tool. And this is obviously a little bit more uh, tedious this way, but I think it gives you a pretty good, you know, it just shows in the end. So what I'm gonna do is here, you can go ahead and drag in another paper rip. I'm just gonna use the same one for this example, because it had a lot of rips that were kind of like circular. I'm just gonna find a spot where I think looks good, then mask that out, select the inverse and delete, and then delete that, make sure to rasterize. And then you can go and, and you can go ahead and delete all the spots you're not using. So just mask around where you're using, select inverse and delete. And then you're gonna wanna blend this as best as you can. I'm gonna do one last bend to make sure it follows the subject as much as possible. And then you can go to the other paper layer and delete the spots that you aren't using as well. I know this is a little confusing, but it's just something that you'll have to play with and you'll get you'll finally get used to it after a while. I'm just kind of showing you guys how you could do something like this. So I think that looks really cool. It looks like it's uh, paper kind of ripped out. I'm gonna go to the eraser tool and just clean up some of the edges. So like here, there's a harsh edge. We can fix that and then right over here as well. And then you can merge the layers if you made multiple paper layers. So just now the paper rip background is one. And then again, I'm just gonna go through and kind of rough up the edges of the overall uh, image itself. And then since you did that, I'm just gonna scout up a bit so it fits in here a little bit better. And then again, dragging in one of these rips so you can get the paper texture on the image itself, scaling it up and dragging it over the image, creating a clipping mask, and then going to something like Lighten or Screen in our case here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and merge these layers. Then it looks like there's something down here. So what I'm gonna do is just follow the image, select Inverse and Delete, and then see if we select it. Now it's just around the box here which is perfect. And then again, copying that layer style if you don't already have it copied and then going to paste layer style. So it has the drop shadow. Export as, go into the stills, texture, and then you can name this watch or whatever you selected. And I'm just gonna turn back on the layers and just play around with our cutouts, just kind of see how they look. So nothing too bad actually, it looks pretty good in my opinion. I think for the sake of tutorial, we're just gonna do just these and uh, save ourselves a little bit of time here. So I'm gonna go to where I took that screenshot. I don't really remember the exact frame, but it doesn't really matter. It can just replace this in all. So I'm just gonna import the whole folder where I had all of these uh, images. So inside, inside this one, it has the textures. And we're gonna start off with the first one. And remember we went ahead and made the first one where it didn't have any of those rips or whatever. And then I'm gonna go two or three frames here and then kind of cut it so it goes to a different thing. But I think I'm gonna have it go one frame in and then maybe add his watch. So after one frame, you can add his watch. And then if you go to effects control and go to just motion, 
You can move it wherever you want. Just play with it however you like. I think I'm just going to cover up his uh, his actual watch and maybe make it a little bit bigger or something. You can actually go ahead and use the tape in Premiere. So I'm just going to import. I'm going to use one of the longer ones here and put that over. And then again, go into effects controls. And go click on motion and then you can scale it down to whatever you like. And then you can rotate it and stuff. Then you want to toss it like right there. So there's a little tape. We can go two frames on that maybe and go into our stills done. And then maybe go into our second frame where there's that. Go here, go to our texture shots, and then maybe add a ring, add it somewhere up there. And then I'm going to go two frames and add the other version of the ring. Go to effects control, have this one maybe go over here somewhere or on his fingers. I think, I think over here, maybe just play around with it. I don't exactly have this planned out. I just go in as, as I see whatever looks cool. So first you have the watch come up with the tape. And after that, we have the second rip thing, some rings here. And then it goes two frames, pops up with another one. It's just going to, I'm going to have it just go one frame here and we can have the third one come up and I'm going to keep the, the overall uh, rings up here. So it just have them above that. It's really just playing around with as much as you want. And then we can go maybe one frame into that, add the watch back in, have it down here. And then I'm going to cut all of them after two frames here and have the inverse one come in. And actually when I have that third image come in, I'm going to have the rings cut out just something I wanted to change and then maybe add some rings in and the more different stills you actually take the uh, better the image and stuff is going to come out and the longer you spend time on or whatever just kind of giving you guys an idea again as always and then I'm just going to flip them upside down here maybe add that in and you can even go into the paper rips and folds pack I'm just giving you guys ideas here and go to paper rips and folds and maybe something like one of these short ones here and then you can just drag this on and go to effects controls on that layer, go to like screen or maybe lighten or something. And you can see that just kind of adds like a extra element to it. One, two, cut there. And then maybe back to one of these and add another one of these rips here. One, two, have this pop up. I'm gonna rescale this one this time. And then you can change the blending mode to whatever you want. I think I'm gonna use screen. You can drag this to wherever you think looks cool. Just playing around with the blending modes actually, whatever you think looks best. For me, I'm going to use screen here and maybe drag it up a bit and then move it there. And I haven't even played to see what this looks like yet. So let's just go ahead and play through this. Do an in and out point here and render it in and out. And I think that effect looks really, really cool. And then obviously you can change the length of all these, whatever, if you think it goes by a little too fast. Honestly, didn't put too much effort into this. You know, we went by pretty quick and I think it looks pretty good. Like it looks pretty realistic. I think the only thing that I could have done better and spent a little bit more time on is maybe the actual rip outs here. I think these cuts here look really good and the tape looks really good. So, you know, whatever you decide to do, just make sure to take some time and uh, put some effort into this. You can go ahead and nest this now. You can even add keyframes or effects to this if you want. If you want Wanted to add you know some more noise for some reason you could go do that uh you could keyframe the scale there's a bunch of random stuff i'm just trying to give you guys as much ideas as possible for these uh this pack because i'm just like so interested to see what you guys come up with so if you guys make an edit with this pack or whatever just be sure to send me a, a dm on instagram i know a few uh directors that are already going to use it in some music videos that are coming up and i'm pretty excited about those so that'll be awesome like I said, guys, if you want to go ahead and snag the pack, the link will be in the description. If you made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate you. Thank you very much. If you haven't already, like and comment. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Peace.